Hey, this is Jared from FakeShemp.net and this is the November Collection Update. Getting in a little earlier than usual this month and that's because this weekend's going to be spent in the darkened cinemas of Alito Theatre in Hawthorne, which is home to this year's Monster Fest, an annual Australian genre film festival that screens movies from not only Australia but from all over the world. Um, and I'm super ecstatic to um, catch up with some mates there, but more than anything else, check out a bunch of new genre films. Uh, so without further ado, let's get started on what I picked up in this last month. First up, we've got The Editor, which I actually saw at last year's Monster Fest, and it made my top 10 favorite films of last year. Uh, this is from Monster Pictures, and this is the definitive version of the film worldwide. I say that because it ports over all the special feature content that was on the Screen Factory release in the US, all the special feature content that was on the Ravens banner release in Canada and adds additional content to that extra content. That's Australian exclusive content, mind you. And if you look in the background on the right hand side, you can see Archie. You can see his anus. See you later, buddy. Um, back to the editor. There's some really cool special features on here. There's a commentary track with Lawrence R. Harvey that's moderated by Film Inc's John Noonan. There's the special feature I produced, Father Knows Best, an interview with Lawrence R. Harvey, uh, and the Australian premiere Q&A, which I also recorded last year uh, at Monster Fest. So yeah, the editor, and it's got this awesome cover art, which is um, from Tom Hodge of the Dude Designs. And underneath the slip case, you've got the uncut art with exposed nipple there. I don't know if you can see that. Um, anyway. On the inside, you've got a reversible slick that's got the artwork that's fashioned like a 70s, 80s uh, Italian theatrical poster. And that's because this film is Astron 6's love letter to Jalo Cinema, and it is stunning. Uh, if you want to hear me go on about this more, listen to the latest FakeShemp.net podcast, podcast number 19. It's our focus film, and we all gush about how good this film is. We also managed to rattle off a bunch of trivia, some of which is true, some of which is not. Um, all of which we were fact-checked by Astron 6, and we will apologize in the next podcast for that. Um, but they were great about it, and they were gracious for us doing the review, but we're grateful that they made this fucking film. Okay, so moving on to Workaholics Season 5, one of my favorite TV shows. I'm hanging for Season 6, starts in February on Comedy Central in the States. Unfortunately, I only released Workaholics on DVD here in Australia, not on Blu-ray, but look, it's not a series that's going to benefit from being in HD, to be honest. Um, at least it ports over all the special feature content that's on the US release, Workaholics Season 5. Next one up, Jumanji. Look, you know, have you seen Jumanji? It's fucking cool. I saw it as a kid. Uh, the wife likes it. We're big Robin Williams fans, and I'm looking forward to revisiting it. It's been quite a while. I don't know how that CGI is going to hold up, though. That'll be interesting. Um, next one up, so speaking of CGI, but CGI that holds up, Jurassic Park. This is Jurassic Park and Jurassic World in one double pack, and they're both the 3D skews of it. Um, I watched Jurassic Park in 3D and it was okay. I saw Jurassic World in 3D when it came out theatrically and it was okay. Um, but look, I didn't actually buy this. I was given it, so I'm just happy to have Jurassic World so I can round out the uh, quadrilogy with a copy of it. Um, more than likely, I'll be looking to watch the 2D version of Jurassic World 3D because I, I saw it in 3D in IMAX, so there's probably a lot I didn't get to see that wasn't you know thrust in the foreground in front of my eyes. I want to pick up on that subtle shit in the background. I want to see that dude carrying the two fucking margaritas um, without a care of, for his life. Moving on, Terminator Genesis. This is the Australian Steelbook release. It has the T-800 on the front. Then on the inside, you've got John Connor. You've got Kyle Reese. And on the back, you've got Sarah Connor. It's a nice Steelbook. Um, it's Blu-ray, and it's got a bonus Blu-ray disc. I don't know if that's exclusive. I don't think it's exclusive to the set. I think the standard Blu-ray release had the bonus disc anyway. Um, but the Steelbook is rather lovely, and I really dug this film. People talk shit about it, but I thought it was fucking cool. If you see it, if anything, see it for 1984 Arnie versus 2015 Arnie. That shit is spectacular. Moving on to Back to the Future Trilogy, um, a reasonably unnecessary upgrade for me. I already own the trilogy on Blu-ray, but now it comes with a bonus disc. Um, bonus disc has a bunch of featurettes, Tales uh, from the Future, a six-part documentary. It's not that documentary that's showing on Netflix. It's called Back in the Day or Back to the Day. Totally different from that. I haven't watched this docker yet, so I can't really comment. It's got a bunch of special features that were probably all present on the previous release. Um, but look, I'm really excited to just get another version of Back to the Future because I fucking, I love these. I love this. I love Back to the Future. 
I, you know, I really like Back to the Future 2 and I'm, you know, still dealing with Back to the Future 3. I like it, but, it, you know, I don't know. Anyway, um, recently I saw Back to the Future here in Melbourne with the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra playing the entire score and it was amazing, like really. I don't know if I've said amazing too much in this one collection update, but I'm going to keep going. Um, along to this film, Monty Python, The Holy Grail, 40th Anniversary Edition. Um, this is an upgrade from DVD Blu-ray for me and I figured it was worth it because uh, not only is the film in HD, but it's also got an all-new 30-minute Q&A um, from the remaining cast members of Monty Python that was uh, held at the Tribeca Film Festival earlier this year. So, yeah, I'm dead keen to have a look at that. Next one up, definitely one of my contenders for top 10 films of 2015, Ex Machina. Um, it's got one of my favourite actors at the moment, Oscar Isaac, in it. He's great. You might know him from Inside Lewin Davis or Balibo or... Um, a, oh, a Most Dangerous Year, what a film. Um, Ex Machina is a very cool film. Um, written and directed by Alex Garland, who uh, yeah, wrote 28 Days Later and Sunshine that um, Danny Boyle directed, Ex Machina. Well worth a watch. Next one is probably one of the funniest comedies I've seen this year, and it was super fucking awkward. The Overnight with Adam Scott, Jason Schwartzman, Taylor Schilling, and an actress that I hadn't seen in anything before, but she was great, Judith Godrich. Get into the swing of things kind of gives away, and I mean the artwork kind of gives it away anyway. Um, at 79 minutes, this was the perfect length for a comedy. It was fast, punchy, and very, very, very funny. Um, I thought it was hysterical, and I've got a soft spot for Adam Scott and Jason Schwartzman. Um, this was great. Really, um, really, really, really cool comedy. I thoroughly recommend it. At 79 minutes, it's, it's a short-term investment, so if you're not entertained, you don't have to feel so bad about having wasted less than 80 minutes on watching it. But um, I reckon it was hilarious. It's up there like with Vacation. It's one of the funniest films I've seen this year. Moving on to another film that I checked out last year at Monster Fest, and that was ABC's of Death 2. This ABC's of Death omnibus release from Monster Pictures actually includes one and two uh, on Blu-ray, plus two discs of DVDs with special features, a um, bunch of production featurettes, and a number of other things, including the best of Monster Shorts, which combines a bunch of short films that have played over the Monster Fest over the years since Monster Fest sort of started in 2012 right through to last year. In fact, there might be one film on here that's actually showing at this year's festival, um, but it's actually got one of my short films on their budget cuts that screened at the 2013 Monster Fest Festival. And um, yeah, I'm extremely honored to have it on this release. It's a spectacular edition done in the fashion of a golden book, which is very, very cool. Um, I'm just gonna take this belly band off here, which is cool because it takes the classification off there. Uh, and just open it. You've probably already seen it in another another YouTube video, but um, I, yeah, I just thought I'd show it off. Pretty cool, honored to have my uh, short budget cuts on there. Next one I've prepared a little earlier for you, and that's the um, Edward Scissorhands 25th Anniversary Edition. Uh, yeah, I went for the silly edition, that's because it was like a buck difference between the standard and the silly version. Um, so yeah, it's got a lot of unnecessary shit that you'll never ever use in here. And in fact, I'm gonna show you, but I like the packaging, I like the slip though. Um, although this is like really just shitty cardboard there, but this slip is kinda nice. Um, I've already taken it off though because there's no real point. It just takes up, hogs up space in the collection. So you do get Edward Scissorhands um, on Blu-ray. This is a brand new scan. It's a 4K scan. Well, it's sourced from a 4K scan because of course this is just um, 1080p. But um, so new scan, apparently it's supposed to be really good. Um, just ports over all the special feature content that was on the previous Blu-ray release. Um, it comes with a UV code that I can't redeem here. And yeah, this is the useless shit. You got this... Um, cookie cutter, which I thought, oh, you know, yeah, I could use that cookie cutter and I can cook eggs in it, but no, it's just plastic. Um, so, yeah, I probably won't be cooking anything in that. Um, this kind of, I don't even know what you call it, kind of um, air freshener, car air freshener, done like one of those sort of topiary kind of creations Edward did in the movie. I mean, fucking Edward Scissorhands is an amazing film. I love Edward Scissorhands. Um, but yeah, that's kind of useless and then this which is probably the most useless thing to come with a dvd is literally just these little characters and you fold them out you can create these yourself and probably do a far better job i don't know what i'll do with those they make me angry i kind of want to set them on fire but i won't because that's just i don't know it's stupid anyway moving on 
The Town That Dreaded Sundown. This is the remake, not the original. This was, um, unfortunately there's no special feature content on it, which is a little disappointing. Um, I really enjoyed this as far as remakes go. I thought they tried to do something different and did it pretty well. Um, it's directed by Alfonso Gomez Rajon, who did uh, Me, Earl and the Dying Girl, which came out uh, not that long ago. It came out here in about September, which is one of my favorite films of 2015. This was his first film. Um, I guess his big break, he directed some TV stuff prior to this, I think some American Horror Story and maybe even some episodes of Glee. Um, in fact, this is produced by Ryan Murphy, who produces Glee and um, and American Horror Story and Screen Queens, and Jason Bloom as well, who produces practically every second horror film released in the US. Um, but The Town of Dreads Sundown was, was fucking cool. It's definitely worth checking out. I don't know when or if it's getting an Australian release. I know it was rated by the classification board here in Australia and got an R. It's supposed to come out through Roadshow. Um, I've heard nothing. Maybe it went digital only. I don't know, but it seems like a waste because this is a really cool film that you need to check out. <clears throat> Moving on to um, some spe uh, second spin titles. Um, probably an unnecessary upgrade, but never ending story on Blu-ray again. Only bought because it's got all this special feature content on it. Um, picked it up pretty cheap secondhand, which I was happy with. But yeah, I've got the local release Blu-ray that's still sealed. Um, I'll get rid of that in favor, obviously, this particular version, which has a bunch of features on it. It even has a restoration feature, which is interesting considering this particular release has not been restored. It's not the restored film. Um, I don't know if that version's come out in Germany or I, I believe maybe I read it had. Uh, Never any story. Um, Sentinel, I covered this on one of the podcasts earlier this year, actually probably only like two podcasts ago. Um, as an obscurity, it is a super fucking cool horror film with special effects by Dick Smith and they are amazing. Uh, when I'm in Brooklyn in January, I'm gonna go and check out the apartment where this film has been shot. Um, yeah, it's a cool film. If you want to hear any more about it, tune into that podcast because, yeah, I rave about how good this film is. It is awesome. Um, next one up, Harry and the Hendersons. I'm sure most folks remember this. Um, bit of an 80s family film classic. In fact, with the special effects makeup in this one, I think it was Rick Baker or was it Dick Smith did this? I've got a feeling it's Rick Baker. Yeah, Rick Baker. Um, John Lithgow, cool film. Happy to actually have it on Blu-ray because I don't, I've never owned it, even on DVD. I think last time I had it was on VHS. Next one up, Lord of Illusions. Uh, upgrade from DVD to Blu-ray. This is a Scream Factory release. Probably seen it in a bunch of other videos. Has the original theatrical key art underneath. And yeah, Lord of Illusions. Upgrade from the Cinema Cult DVD to the Scream Factory Blu-ray. Thinner recently uh, spoke about this film on podcast number 19 as my forgotten gem. Directed by Tom Holland, based on a novel by Stephen King. This is a really cool film um, where the special effects are probably the most standout thing about it, um, which is a good thing because it is a good film. And this DVD actually has a feature on those special effects. Unfortunately, this DVD is non-anamorphic, but it is in its original aspect ratio. And the transfer quality is awful. Moving on to the next one, Copycat, which is a psychological thriller from the uh, early to mid, well, probably mid 90s. I haven't seen it for a long time. Harry Connick Jr. plays a great character in it, and uh, his use of the word, I think it was squirrel covers, really funny. I'm looking forward to checking it out. I haven't seen it for over a decade, so I'm looking forward to checking this one out, hopefully with the wife, maybe even tonight if she's keen, Copycat. Moving on to Army of Darkness, which is about probably the seventh version I've owned of this film on DVD or Blu-ray um, and it's got in VHS probably eight or nine. We can add that up. This is supposed to be the definitive version. Um, Screen Factory are doing a replacement program with discs one and three because I believe they're missing a few seconds of footage. That's cool, I've sent that in, so um, I'll have those replacement discs sooner or later. Army of Darkness on Blu-ray. Then the last one, which I'm definitely not gonna go into any uh, time explaining because everyone's probably already done this a million times on YouTube, and that's the Arrow release of the Scarlet uh, box, Hellraiser Scarlet box, which features Hellraiser 1, 2, and 3, as well as a bunch of extra shit, including special features, uh, sorry, short films from Clive Barker, and then there's like a hardbound book in there. There's all sorts of crap. Um, this is already deleted. I think it was deleted. Um, well, not even deleted so much as completely sold out within like a day or two of its release and maybe even a day or two ahead of its release. But Hellraiser the Scarlet Box, thank you so much for watching the November Collection update. I'll be back next month in December to go and do this all again. Tune into the podcast and uh, yeah, I'll see you next month. Bye. <laughs>